Chairman Neal, Ranking Member Brady, members of the committee, my name is Dr. Reno Samoa. I'm a clinical research endocrinologist at the City of Hope. I lead research studies to help cancer survivors optimize their metabolism and the fight to beat cancer. But today I address you as the clinical lead for the National Pacific Island COVID-19 Response Team, or the, NP, or the NPICRT. Please note that this testimony reflects my own views alone and not the views of organizations with which I'm currently affiliated. My father retired as a chief foreign officer from the U.S. Army and instilled in me as in many Pacific Islanders or PIs, the importance to serve and protect all of our communities. U.S. US Pacific Island territories have some of the highest rates of recruitment into the U.S. Armed Forces, reflecting the commitment of our men and women who are willing to die in defense of the freedoms we Americans so richly enjoy. Today, I'm here to report the devastating and disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on PIs, as they have the highest rate of confirmed COVID-19 cases in California, California King County in Washington State, Clark County in Nevada, and the second highest in Utah, Oregon, Arkansas, and Colorado. In Los Angeles County, the death rate for PIs is 12 times higher than it is for whites, seven times higher for Latinos, and five times higher than for African Americans. PIs have extremely high rates of chronic disease, such as diabetes, certain cancers, heart disease, which increase their risk of death if they contract COVID-19. Compared to non-Hispanic whites, PIs are 80% more likely to be obese, 30% to have asthma, and two and a half times more likely to have diabetes. 20% of PIs do not have medical coverage when compared to 11.4% of non-Hispanic whites, which affects their timely access to needed healthcare services. PIs are more likely than any other racial or ethnic groups to have fewer financial resources and to live in large multi-generational households in uh, densely populated neighborhoods. As much as 24% of PIs work in essential jobs, such as the military, security, service-related industry, healthcare, placing them at higher risk of infection. The call to action. In March 2020, I contracted COVID-19 because like so many in my community, I'm an essential worker. When I became aware of the alarming rates, I searched feverishly for an advocacy group to volunteer. My search ended with the sobering realization that there is no voice for Pacific Islander health on the national level. Many of the public health agencies charged to protect all of us had no idea what our community was experiencing. I am the only endocrinologist of Pacific Island descent on the U.S. continent. A PI network fighting diabetes and cancer already exists and has prolific experience in navigating the obstacles faced by PIs. Knowing that our friends and family members are contracting and dying from COVID-19, we're not willing to stand idly by for others to plan and implement a course or a response. The NPICRT is a consortium of researchers, physicians, public health experts, elected officials, and community advocates created to respond to the pandemic. The team developed a comprehensive strategy based on initiatives used by New Zealand, a country that has a large PI population, genetically identical with a socioeconomic profile and chronic disease prevalence that mirrors that of the diaspora in the U.S. West. New Zealand has a lower rate of disease and has yet to report a single death from COVID-19 in the PI population there. The difference between the experience of our community in the U.S. and our cousins across the ocean have been how well these protective initiatives engage vulnerable communities. The continued rise in the already high rates of COVID-19 unfortunately suggests that these strategies have yet to reach the PI community. Our existing community infrastructure is the most effective means of ensuring protection of PI populations in America from COVID-19. Our regional task force were directly responsible for much of the availability of the data I present today. They directed more testing be available in neighborhoods known to have higher concentration of PI residents and have identified how COVID-19 disparities yet to be reported. All of this is progress, but there's still a considerable amount of work that needs to be done such as more contact tracing. But for it to be effective, positive cases must trust public health officials because PR is reporting experiencing a mistrust in seeking healthcare services. Incorporating the existing trust equity of the community to augment local health department efforts have high potential for improved outcomes. This incorporation informs the NPICRT strategy to optimize collaboration. The comprehensive strategy is located on the Pacific Islander Center of Primary Care of Excellence or the PICOPC website. Resources are needed to support this work, such as an electronic data collection system that speaks to health departments and a user-friendly electronic directory of resources to support uh, PI individuals to safely quarantine. To conclude, I'd like to offer up two concrete steps Congress can take to help end this disproportionate devastation. First, a lot of funding for this evidence-based community-driven community, uh, comprehensive initiative to fight COVID-19 in PI communities. The NPICRT's convening organization, PICOPSI, is working on an MOU with the HRSA-funded Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations. Second, we urge Congress to fix a, uh, fix a legislative oversight that has led to inequitable access to health care for thousands of PIs in America. Since the passage of the Personal Responsibility and Work uh, Opportunity Reconciliation Act, 
People residing in the U.S. under Compact Security Association are ineligible for Medicaid, causing thousands, thousands of PIs to be denied basic access to health care. Lastly, let me close by giving a couple of quick shout outs. On April 17, 2020, a group of approximately 25 Pacific Islanders joined a Zoom call armed with hope to help during a crisis. Today, this amazing resourceful group is a cadre of over 300 volunteers from 10 different states. Lastly, to my fellow PI Central workers, Yu Chamorro servicemen in Texas, Tong and postal workers in Utah, Marshallese poultry workers in Arkansas, Micronesian meat handlers in Illinois, and salmon nurses in Orange County. Thank you for risking your health and the health of your families to serve the American public. I hope in return, America honors that sacrifice by granting you the tools to defend our vulnerable communities from the ravaging effects of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samoa. Uh, Dr. Sequist, would you please proceed?